let's talk about abuse in VAWA petitions. Remember, we have talked about eligibility requirements when it comes to VAWA petitioners, self-petitioners. We've talked about it and we have emphasized the fact that, well, when it comes to VAWA, the number of visas are un unlimited. So if you have a valid VAWA case, well, chances are you are going to get your green card. But you have to know really how you define abuse. Remember VAWA, Violence Against Women Act, applies both to women and men, children included, parents of US citizens included as well. Um, so, but the question is, what is abuse, okay? Really, what is abuse? And um, this is the, basically the circle, right? We have the big circle, abuse, then we have battery and extreme cruelty. But the entire concept here of VAWA is that the person in question has been abused. And there is a relationship between the person and the abuser. That's why they were abused, right? Based on that type of relationship, okay? Physical abuse, number one. Physical abuse, basically, you've been beaten. That's when it, it goes with battery, right? Assaulted, really. Um, you have been uh, pushed. Some people get pushed, like, um, in the stairs and fell from being pushed by their partners. Um, then you have scars from those, um, you suffer really physically. Uh, you can take pictures, of course, or you can just relate uh, the story. Uh, you don't really have to have like a medical report, like you went to the hospital, but if you're in danger, friend, please go to the hospital or call 911. But we're talking just here for the purpose of this video, how you can define really abuse when it comes to the physical part, right? Then we have emotional abuse. Emotional abuse is when somebody's receiving threats and somebody's being humiliated. Really, it, it goes deep to your emotion uh, and your emotional state, well-being. Are you safe? Do you feel safe in that type of environment? Uh, are you being really uh, humiliated to the, to the point where you lose your self-confidence in yourself as a human being and you suffer those type of abuse even though you cannot really tell the story to other people because you feel ashamed of it but you can relate those type of stories to your lawyer or to the USCIS officer for the purpose of uh, uh, your VAW application, okay? Then we go to sexual abuse. Uh, that's when we talk about rape, um, forced sexual acts, and things that you're not supposed to do but you're being forced to do just because of that uh, relationship, okay? Then we have... Um, um, financial abuse, somebody controlling you, the way you make money, how you make it, when you should make it, what you should buy with it, that's financial abuse. Or you should pay them when they're not working. You know what I mean? Like you should give them money for, and, and that's preventing you um, really from working. Like basically, you give them money, not preventing you from working, but basically preventing you from doing what you want to do with the money, like in terms of controlling you. And some people really go so far in the fact that, uh, the fact that they will prevent their, their spouse to work so that they can control them financially as well, so that they, they become so dependent. In other words, they refuse to apply for the work permit because they know that when the spouse get the work permit, the spouse is going to go and work for themselves. Um, that those, those type of abuse, my friend, how do you prove it? With your own statement, okay? Affidavits of friend and family. If you have proof in terms of paperwork, that's fine, but you, you don't have to collect this, like to start like uh, journaling um, just to make your case. You can just tell 
the story to a lawyer, related what's your statement of fact, and get some support from friends and family affidavits, notarized, of course, to give it some credibility. So those are the type of abuse you can claim in your VAWA petition. Another thing, too, I want to add is uh, when somebody lied that they were never uh, married before, or they got, they got a divorce, but they really didn't, and you find yourself in a situation of bigamy without your knowledge, that's abuse, emotional abuse. As a matter of fact, that's really an exception to the VAWA petitioner uh, good faith marriage in terms of if you didn't know that the person wasn't divorced, that's not your fault because you went there in good faith, okay? So, uh, and that's abuse too. Those are the things that you have to claim in your VAWA petition in order for it to get approved. So, um, and somebody told me last time that uh, their petition uh, got denied because they themselves did not get a real divorce because the divorce happened uh, from outside of the country. They couldn't verify that. That's a different story. We're talking about if the abuser is the one who did not get a valid divorce and you went in good faith and come to find out that uh, really they, they just um, messed up and that's, uh, you found yourself in a situation of bigamy, that's not your fault. So you shouldn't be penalized for it. So let us argue for you because we've done it before and we've done it so well. As a matter of fact, we have been able to even get uh, those cases uh, in expedited request uh, um, approval mode because uh, really if you have a case, you can jump the line because remember the waiting time is 30 months. Uh, but if you have a case for expedited request, we can try to expedite your case too and get you that approval and that work permit so you can get out of that uh, abusive situation. That's the goal, okay? And that's the job of a qualifying attorney. If you, if you do not have one, my friend, uh, I encourage you to have one. Uh, you can schedule a consultation by using the link in the description box below. Until next time, bye-bye.